Hello, lovely listeners. Um, today's podcast, I have a, a good friend of mine, Tiffany, uh, Tiffany Lark, who I also met, if you listen to the previous podcast, I also met through SFM. And um, we're all, you know, not settling for, for what was happening in our lives and wanting to change our lives um, in whatever that looked like for everybody. But that's how I met Tiff. She's a, she's a, and it's very inspiring person in terms of how she's changed her life in the last couple of years or so, um, and obviously longer than that, really. Um, so Tiff, welcome. Thank you very much for being with me today. Thank you, Mel. I'm happy to be here. Yeah. Great. Always good to be in your space. <laughs> Likewise. <laughs> Likewise. Um, so, so, um, Obviously, the nature of this podcast is all about people that don't settle. Um, they realize that they're settling, they want to change their life. So what was it? I mean, it could be relationships, it could be career. It's entirely up to you what you want to talk about, because I know, obviously, some of your history and your past. We've shared some stories. So what is it for you where you, you know, decided you were settling and needed to change it? Gosh, um, we were just talking about this before we started recording too. And I, I feel like I actually settled so much in life. So, and it's a, around every area actually. And maybe, maybe that's kind of the, the approach that I'll take here. Because one of the things that I, that I realized was that I was so busy um, trying to be what I thought other people wanted me to be, to do, to, to be what I thought that I should be, that I wasn't, I wasn't listening to myself. So <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually, maybe this is an interesting twist on this, but I feel like I was settling for the second best version of me. Right, got you. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> so that was across everything basically yeah ab absolutely i mean and, and at different times you know some but i just felt like i sort of was on this mission to well if i can get everything sorted out you know the right relationship the right career the right job even then then everything would be great and the truth is that I really discovered that all of everything that wasn't working in my life was just a symptom of me not knowing, loving, and trusting myself and therefore being the best version of me. So when did, when did all this sort of start to unravel itself? How long ago were we talking here in terms of you thinking that you're settling for the second, second best version of yourself? That's quite a statement. Yeah. Uh, I wasn't expecting to say that actually. <laughs> so, you know, I, I feel like really with any, just like with anything it, that started showing up incrementally for me. Um, now five, six years ago, I definitely, and, and honestly, this is the first time I'm saying it this way now. So five, six years ago, there's no way that I would have, um, verbalized it this way but I've, I've just always felt like there's something more for me there's something the, there was always something pulling me to do something more and so this this really led into like I was saying trying to find the perfect relationship or trying to find the perfect job within a career um, and so I often like that more thing is just pulling me to do those kinds of things and what I really needed to do was go inward. I'm not really answering your question yet. Um, but let's, I would say probably in the, in the biggest revelation of, of this in the last couple of years. Okay. And, yeah. and was there any, was there a particular thing that happened or was a, was there an event? Was there a thought? You know, was there something that sort of triggered this off? Yeah, I would say 
that really that was me choosing to leave a verbally and emotionally abusive relationship. Right. So I was really at that, that point of shadow of myself and, you know, just kind of knew it was coming, but finally just made the decision and, and moved in sort of such a whirlwind that I wasn't even really sure where I was going to land that night. Um, so you were living and with then this what's that? You were living with this person. Yeah. I was actually married to uh, him. Yeah. So, um, so after that, yeah, I mean, it was, it was my lowest low ever. And, and I just, it really sort of forced me to go inside and start taking a look at the life that I had created and the patterns that I could actually see that I, you know, creating over and over again in some variety <laughs> of the same thing over and over again and just really getting serious about making some changes in my life because this obviously wasn't working. So was it a particular bad experience that had you leave the house that night not knowing where you were going to go? Well, it, it ended up being a little more planned than that, but um, I just to tap back into how I was feeling at the time, like things were already bad. I did, you know, I'd moved out for a month or so and then moved back in. And um, I just, like I said, I really felt like a shadow of myself. I, I was having a lot of anxiety, which is not something that I've ever, I would never have considered myself an anxious person before. Um, so that was, something really new for me. Uh, I also, and that, that was manifesting physically for me too. So um, I was itching so much, scratching my body so much all over the place that I had scabs on my back and on my arms. And, um, you know, anytime I would get notifications on my phone, I would have like a little mini <laughs> panic attack. My heart would go racing. So I just knew that I couldn't continue to live that way. Um, that again, there was something more for me that, that I was not, I was not being who I really am at all. Um, I was cowering and minimizing and shrinking and all of those things. Um, and I just, yeah, I just knew that I couldn't, I couldn't do it anymore. It was, it was the hardest decision that I ever had to make because this was not my first marriage. This is my, my second marriage. And, um, I realize now that it was just my own judgment, but there was, a, there was a lot of judgment for, you know, like I can get, maybe that I didn't get the first one right, but the second one was supposed to be really right. <laughs> And, and it was really wrong. And I didn't know if I could swallow that pill, which is probably why I stayed as long as I did. Um, I mean, we were married for nearly exactly one year. <laughs> so it was kind you know, in the overall scheme of things, it was a short period of time, but we'd been dating for a couple of years before that. So it just got worse after we got married and we actually moved in together. Um, yeah. Okay. And you, you mentioned uh, repeating the same habits. So the previous relationships you've had, were they a similar vein or? Yeah. Well, what I see now is that they were, um, but but also that my relationships in that way were getting worse. So there was some vein of manipulation or emotional abuse um, happening each time. 
and and with uh, so I would say there were three sort of serious relationships. Two of them I was married, and and the last one was by far the most significant. And it sounds to me, from what you said before, it was just this inner knowing, this inner knowing that you couldn't ignore anymore. Um, right. That got you to, to take action and get out of there. Yes, a absolutely. And, and that is something that I've really, I feel like I've experienced my whole life. Like there's just something more for you. There's something more for you. And so I keep searching for these external things because that's what I knew to do. Um, and obviously it wasn't fixing anything. And in a lot of ways, things were just getting worse and worse. Sure, okay. So you're, you're now on your own, you've moved out. Um, what happened next in terms of how you felt and, and sort of what came next for you in life? Yeah. So it was a lot of unknown. Um, you know, it's interesting and hopefully I'm not going back and forth too much here, but, <laughs> but I feel like that very experience threw me into living life in the unknown. Because like I said, I mean, I knew that I would have a place to lay down that night. I just didn't know where I was going. All I knew was that I was leaving. And um, and then there, there was just so much unknown. I didn't know how long I was gonna be there. I didn't know what I was gonna do next. There were questions with the job that I had at the time. And that was also really stressful. And, and so I, yeah, I feel like this experience really just threw me into the unknown in a way that I could do nothing but surrender to it. And so it just had to be what it was. And I literally had to take one day at a time and, and one decision at a time. Was it scary? It was really scary. Um, you know, I cried probably every day, feels like all day, was super just triggered by anything, yeah. you know, um, for what felt like the longest time. And I actually don't know what the time frame was, but I just cried and cried and cried and cried. And then one day I stopped crying and it was literally like somebody flipped a switch. It, you know, and I, I ex would experience something that I felt like would have normally made me cry, which would, could have been anything. Um, and, and I didn't, and I was like, okay. So then for the longest time, I was sort of in anticipation of the tears still coming. Yeah. And then they just yeah. kept not coming. Um, so that was a big transition period too. And, and in, in this time too, I've always been really big into personal growth and development stuff. So I was, you know, diving deep into YouTube, trying to fix my life <laughs> at the time and just listening to anything and everything to, and I, what I would say is just getting really curious about how, so how, how, do, how did I create the space that I'm in right now? Yeah. What is my responsibility in this? Because of course, being in an abusive relationship you know, you're a little bit like, like, this is not me. This is, this is him. Um, and so there were, it was very confusing for me to sort of sort through that. What's my responsibility in this space for having created this, the situation that I'm in right now. And so I'm searching for a lot of meaning, um, or searching a lot for meaning around that. And and just being curious and open to, you know, whatever I could find in that space. So what sort of things were you listening to on YouTube? I mean, I'm, I'm the same as you, as you know, and I, I listen to an awful lot of things. Um, you know, favorites yeah. of mine are Abraham Hicks and Wayne, yeah. Wayne Dyer and, um, you know, who, who did you tap into at that time? So Abraham Hicks popped into my awareness for the very first time ever. 
in this time frame and I I just was consuming as much Abraham as I could especially around relationship stuff yeah. um, and and I was pretty focused in that spot it was just the right thing for me uh, at the time and I couldn't even tell you necessarily like there's nothing that's standing out to me as like a big aha moment um, in that space, but I just knew that I needed to feed. Good. I needed to feed that part of, yeah. yeah. I needed to feed good stuff in. I needed to be like, be immersing myself yeah. in that kind of space. And, and like I said, to, I needed to create some meaning around what my experience was and, and how I could move forward and do it different this time. I was also, so I think I was 39 at the time, actually. So that year I was going to turn 40. Um, and that was also a big thing for me. So, I mean, I said that, that before it's, you know, I just manifested in all areas of my life. So my career has been in nursing and I became a nurse knowing that I never wanted to be a nurse it was supposed to be a, a means to an end. Um, I was going to go back and get my nurse practitioner. But when that opportunity, when I'd done what I needed to do to be able to, to go back to school to do that, I just had no desire to go back to school. So I sort of spent my life trapped in this career that I knew that I never wanted to have and trying to make the best of it and trying to find an area within it that would work for me and all the time feeling like there was more. So I was working in a nursing career um, at that time too. And although I was working from home and, you know, it's like not the worst job that I've had in that area. I didn't dislike it the most, I guess that's what I'm trying to say, but, but there was still something in me saying that there was more and, here I've just come out of this terrible relationship. I'm still working in a career that I don't love. I'm about to turn 40 and I am just like, I cannot, I feel like I'm in a hamster wheel and I'm just running in circles and getting nowhere. And I cannot imagine living the rest of my life in a hamster wheel and something has got to change. And so because I was on YouTube trying to fix my life and, you know, watching so much Abraham, um, I actually, that's when I found the SFM. Got it. It's funny, you know, that age 40, um, as you were saying it, I, I went straight back to when I was 40 and um, me and my husband, we were still uh, living in the same house at that point, but I told him that I, wanted out basically um, and I think there's a lot to be said for women that hit their 40s you know in terms of but because I think women are a classic aren't they I know I certainly was you know in my teens and 20s you know you're very insecure um, 30s you generally are settling down or you get married um, and that gives you a bit of security but it's the external security as opposed to the you know the internal um, and then you realize that you've made a huge mistake and that this person that you've pledged to spend the rest of your life with is not the person you want to spend the rest of your life with, you know, and you, you yeah. actually want to get to know yourself better rather than be with somebody, you know, and that's certainly what I went through anyway. So I can completely relate to that. I mean, I didn't have the abusive relationship that you had. So yeah, you know, any, any, any ladies listening to this, I think, um, you know, that have been in the same situation as yourself um, or just in an unhappy um, marriage or relationship. For, for what you went through, if you could give, if you could, if you could be talking to yourself back then as the person you are now, what would you want to say to you back then before you'd had the courage to, to do what you did? I, well, I know that the biggest thing for me, because after all of this, the thing that was, that I was really um, 
I don't know, sort of clinging to, or just knowing that I wanted so much in my life was to really be in integrity with who, who I really am. So there's this kind of, uh, idea inside or this feeling that I had inside that the person that I was being in my day-to-day -day life was not who I really was. And I wanted to be the same person on the outside that I felt like I was on the inside. And like I was saying before, there was so much of, um, and it really boils down to just not wanting to be rejected. Yeah. Right. And that can happen in so many ways, but, um, the rejection and I just, I, I wasn't confident enough in myself to just be okay with being rejected. Um, so I realized that I went in, I never considered myself a needy person, but I realized now that I went into that, into all of those relationships actually needing somebody to uh, help me get like this idea of needing somebody to help me get where I wanted to go, be the person that I wanted to be. And now, you know, I know that I can do that for myself. So if I could go back and, and communicate something uh, it would be something along those lines like i my passion now is is for myself and to work with other people to build more intimate relationships with themselves to know love and trust who they are and my experience is that you know that can really take you from a place of being broken to having a really beautiful life full of magic literally and harmony yeah, lovely. um so how has this impacted your life now i sort of took you a little bit off track you mentioned sfm um and obviously that's when you found sfm so for the last couple yeah. of years how has this changed your life yeah so i just you know, it, it took me about a year after leaving the relationship and there was a lot of healing going on and a lot of meaning making, like I was talking about before, but just um, making that mean something that was really empowering to me instead of continuing to put me in the victim space. So I feel like that's what really happened for me in those first 10 months or so. And then I actually found somebody um, else that I really, really resonate with. His name is Kyle Cease. And I started listening to his stuff. And this one, I know exactly what it was that he said that had so much impact on me. And it, it was that you can only receive the amount of love that you're willing to give yourself. And I knew even then that, you know, like this is not a new concept. People say things that are sim similar to this all of the time, but for whatever reason, this particular verbiage really struck home with me. And so I started to consider, um, you know, I've always had this idea of the kind of relationship that I wanted to have in my life and what that would feel like and the way we would communicate with each other and all of that stuff. And I, I still, even after all of these not so great relationships was very like, I just there, I think there was just a knowing in me that that was possible. Yeah. Um, so I started to consider and really think about what that, what that kind of love looked like. And, you know, at, up to this point, I really thought that I did love myself. Um, and obviously there's an element of that because otherwise I don't think I would have been able to leave those relationships. And actually I was the one that chose to leave all of those relationships. Um, so, you know, there's a level that, that I loved myself, but I, I really realized that I did not, I was not, did not even come close to loving myself 
that much, like as much as this dream relationship, <laughs> right? And so it was at that moment that I realized that I had some work to do. If that's what I wanted in my life, then I had some work to do. Um, and it took me inward even more. And I just, I made a commitment to myself that, that I was just going to do the things that helped me to feel the most connected with me. Um, music is one of those things for me. And I've always loved singing. And, you know, I grew up with, you need to get a real job to support your hobby of music. So music has always kind of been on the back burner, hobby sort of status, which meant that a lot of times I didn't do it at all. And then there were times when it would kind of work its way in, but then it would fall off again because, you know, I have to have the job and, and there's uh, all this other stuff and, and relationships and other people taking up my time. And that's just a hobby. So it, it would continually get put on the back burner. So I just sat down and I said, you know, what is it that I feel like is going to help me get most connected with me so that I can know on a deeper level who I am because I don't, there's an element of knowing who you are, um, but then there's embodying that. And I feel like I just, my whole life, I've never really allowed myself to be who I am. Um, so I made a commitment to um, singing, playing, or writing for a minimum of 15 minutes every day, uh, exercising for a minimum of 15 minutes every day. I was doing out an hour's worth of meditation. So just the things that I felt pulled to do for myself and the ways that I felt most connected with me. And I actually made a commitment to myself to do that for a hundred days. What that ended up looking like though was more like 45 days of very consistent doing this. And then a little less consistent after that, but it was still happening. And then after that too, like, especially with the music stuff, I mean, magical things just started happening. I started meeting people and just like being in the right place at the right time. Um, and, you know, met somebody who I, I made a big move actually too, to a beautiful place and didn't know anybody there. Um, just was something that I felt to do. And at your lake house. Yes. Yeah. Um, and then, and then I just started meeting really amazing people in really amazing ways. And the music, after I made a move, I was, it, it was in my, um, space and I had an intention to find somebody to play guitar for me so that I could sing because this is something that I love to do. It's something that helps me to feel really connected with me and, and it can no longer, you know, be hobby status, which was all the commitment that I made to myself to prioritize that. So I guess the other thing that I want to say about that is that I, I made sure that I did all of those things before I did anything else in the day. Okay. So I was my number one priority. Connecting with me was my number one priority every day. And I, I feel like that was the other big thing because we often also always put ourselves last. Yeah, and which that. means that then those things don't happen because it's the end of the day and now you're tired and, yeah. and you keep saying, well, I'll have time to do it later. I'll have time to do it later, which means that you just never do it. So what I found was by making that commitment to myself, then all these other magical things just started showing up. And, and I got to the point where I didn't have to, you know, do any kind of music for 15 minutes in the morning because it had just integrated itself into my life. And the more I practiced things like that, just, being with myself and following my impulses, even when they didn't make sense. 
uh, or seem responsible or like a logical move, even in just the little things. So I started out with the little things like I'd rather go buy a cup of coffee from a place than make a cup of coffee at home this morning. That's what I feel pulled to do. And so just doing that. Um, but that, that grew into the more I did that, the more I sort of built that trust muscle with myself, with my intuition and, and the actual following through with it was me being in integrity with who I actually am. Um, so the more I did that, then the more I was able to do that with bigger and bigger things, thus making the move. And then in October of this last year, so 2019, I actually quit my nursing career, which is something that I wanted to do for years and just sort of never been able to do. And I'll say too, it was not, it did not seem like a logical time for me to be doing that at all. It was not something that I planned. It was just something that I felt pulled to do at that time and I haven't regretted it. That must have been scary though, because you, you, did you have anything to go to at that point? Well, I have, um, you know, lots of family. <laughs> so I knew that ultimately I would have a place to live if, if that was the case. But like I was saying, I, I lived with family for several months before then I, and I was working the career. So I was bringing in plenty of money, decided to make a move and rent a place and get into a lease. Um, I just bought a new car. So now, now I have rent and I have a new car payment that I'm making and I have utilities that I have to pay, none of which sort of existed when I was living with family. <laughs> and then I decided actually to take some time off work to work on building my coaching business because that is my dream. And just during that time, I just kept hearing, well, what if you just went back and gave your notice? And I remember the first time that came through, however it did, like whether it was a feeling or a thought or something that I heard, I don't even know how to describe that really. But my first reaction was, why would I do that? <laughs> because like I said, I've taken on all of these extra expenses and, and I had a little bit of savings, but that was really already, I mean, that was supposed to go somewhere else. Yeah. It wasn't for me, to, like it wasn't really savings. It already had a place to go. Um, so I just thought that doesn't even make any sense. But I was also reading Kyle Cease's new book called The Illusion of Money. He talks about how we put our security in money um, and that our security is really us. We are our own security. So at the end of this week, I believe it was on a Saturday, I was taking a walk and I know that I was having some doubts about this whole idea of going back and giving my notice at this job. And just for a split second, like everything went blurry and kind of all melded together in my vision and, and the, the feeling that came along with that was just this real sense of oneness. And then what I heard in that moment too was, you will never know what's on the other side of this career if you don't let the career go. And you are the apple tree, you are not the apple. Um, the universe has got you like this, all this oneness, you know, the universe has got you, you've got you and you will never know what's on the other side of this. If you don't let that go, like really draw a line in the sand and say that you're done and, and own this new space that you want to be in. You have to take that step. You have to take that leap into this thing that you're feeling pulled to do and know that you're gonna be fine. So these were thoughts. It's gonna be fine. What's that? These were just thoughts that kept coming up and you couldn't, couldn't ignore. 
Right. So I, you know, then I had a, I had a roommate at the time actually. So I was sharing with her kind of everything that had happened. And then just by speaking it out loud, I knew that I, that it was what I was going to do. So I went back to work. Um, and that Monday, like first thing I got in touch with my manager and said, I'm giving my two weeks notice. And I have not regretted <laughs> doing that. Um, it's, it's changed. It's also changing everything. It's changing my relationship with money. You know, I was making plenty of money before I had money to spend, to go do pretty much whatever it was that I wanted to do. And I, I recognize now that every time I went to spend any kind of large amount of money, it was always like, oh, you're spending too much money. Oh, you're spending too much money. And now I don't have any money. And, um, and, I'm, t and I'm still taking on extra expenses. And, and I just realized how ridiculous it, it was that I felt like every time I was spending a large amount of money that it, I was spending too much. I had plenty. It was fine. Um, so they, that's really interesting. My whole relationship with time is shifting as well. Um, you know, I really used to live for the weekends like everybody else. And now sometimes Wednesday looks like what a Saturday maybe looked like for me. And on Saturday, I'm ready to go and get some work done. Um, yeah. Cool. So it sounds like a hell of a lot's changed then. <laughs> a lot a lot a lot has changed i i'm sometimes i don't even recognize myself although i also recognize that this is who i've always been you know it's just not now i'm actually allowing myself to be who i've always been rather than being who i think every else wants me to be or who I should be yeah it's interesting you saying sometimes you don't recognize yourself but I guess that's because you played out the other person for so long that yeah. you kind of have to pinch yourself a little bit and go eh, you know it's still as much work as we've all done on ourselves you know and you especially it's um you still we all still have those doubting times don't we those what is right for sure yeah you know what, what it feels like to me is, I mean, because I've done that other thing for so long, like this really allowing me and to be who I am and being in integrity with myself, which is what I'm also going to ca call intuition, being in integrity with my intuition. Um, shoot, I just forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> It'll come back or it won't. Yeah, I'm intuition again. <laughs> Um, okay, so um, it seems to me that, you know, for the listeners that are listening right now, your story is one of, which will be a lot of people's story. Um, and the sad, thing, the sad thing is the majority of people that feel that way don't do anything about it because they feel trapped financially. They feel you know, the confidence is gone. They feel that there's no self-worth, you know, and, and and all of those things that keep people, you know, stuck in the situation that they don't want to be in or in a career that they don't want to be in. It's really interesting to hear your relationship with money has changed because that is something that I'm personally still working on, as um, I'm sure you are aware. But um, to have the, the courage to quit that job, knowing that you've got expenses, that takes that takes huge kahunas to do that and that isn't something that i've yet done uh, myself um so hats off to you for that and and hearing you say that your relationship is changing and you might not have any money but you're still taking on extra expenses my mind's boggled by that right now so <laughs> we can have this conversation offline at some point but that sounds yeah that sounds pretty good to me um so I suppose as we sort of bring this to a close, um, what advice would you give to others that are listening that uh, feel stuck, feel like they're settling? Um, 
have they got the bravery to do something about it? I don't know. But listening to this, you know, might mm-hmm. help them move that one little step further forward. So what advice, would, if somebody was stuck in that situation, would you give to them right now? I really believe that, again, the, whatever isn't working in your life right now is just a symptom of you not knowing, loving, and trusting yourself, like in a real intimate way and so that's where the work really has to begin if you're you know if you're in an abusive relationship or if things are really bad whatever that is then I would just encourage you to to take that step and get yourself into a safe place and and then the work is to actually build an intimate relationship with you and there are so many tools to do that. And there's, there's so many uh, kind of shifts in perspective around what that even means. Um, you know, for me too, it's, it's always sort of been elusive, this idea of self-love. People are always saying that you need to do it. But my, my kind of understanding was, or what I was feeling was like, there are only so many massages, manicures, and pedicures that you can get before you go broke. Like, like there has to be more to it than this, but, but I didn't, I didn't really know how, I didn't really know how. And I feel like a lot of people feel that way. Um, but I have, I have a new understanding of that now. And, and like I was saying before, it's, it's one of the things that I really love to help people with. Um, I mean, that is my passion (laughs) to help people build that intimate relationship with themselves. Okay. And, and I would say that's, I mean, that's where, that's where the magic is. Get to know you, love you like so immensely um, and start following your intuition and all of those things really go together. Um, but when you do that and, and you're in integrity with the whole of who you are, then that is that is where the magic is absolutely absolutely um i couldn't agree more i think i think deep down we all know well well, we we do know when we're out of integrity whether we choose to accept it acknowledge it um give it a voice or whatever we all do and i i remember how i felt for so long you know in the relationship i was in in my marriage um i knew it was wrong but like you said, there was there was too many boxes ticked. Everyone else was getting married, having kids, all that sort of thing, and you just go along for the ride, don't you? And you think this is what you should be doing. Yeah. Um, right. So, well, that's fantastic, Tiff. So, if if people want to reach out to you, I mean, obviously you you've mentioned earlier that you're a coach, and and your passion is you know helping people with their intimate relationship with themselves. If people want to reach out to you and understand a little bit more about how you might be able to help them or um, just if they want to reach out and, and, and have a chat with you, how can they do that? Yeah, so I would say probably one of the easiest ways to find me is just through my website, which is tiffanylark.com. And my name is spelled differently, of course. <laughs> so it's T-I-F-A-N-N-E-L-A-R-K.com. And Uh, They would be able to, you know, schedule time to have a conversation with me or follow me on social media sites from that place. So that is the place that I would point people toward. Perfect. That's great. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure uh, to spend this hour with you, Tiffany. Thank you very much for sharing your amazing story and your wonderful insights. I really appreciate it. It was my pleasure, Mel, and thank you so much for having me. And like I said, it's always, I'm always happy to be in your space. (laughs) All right. Thanks, Tiffany. Um, And thanks, listeners. Uh, Till the next time.